everyone. Today I'm going to be featuring a very a new premium, the Champagne, the Tier 8 French Premium Battleship. This ship has certainly been a strange experience. I've gone from greatly enjoying it to absolutely hating it to finally what I hope is uh, able to review it objectively. The ship itself is certainly unique. The health pool is 52.6k and uh, for, for anyone confused that is a very very low health pool. In fact the Odin was recently nerfed to 52.8 and it, that ship has a very very strong armor and even that was considered to be honestly too little. This thing has 52.6. And let's make no mistakes here. The armor on the Champagne is absolute garbage. Now, we are talking the worst armor of any tier 8 by far. In fact, the entire nose part of the ship is 25 millimeters of plating. 25 millimeters of plating, of course, means that any battleship you face is going to be overmatching you. I mean, I, mean, I guess you can bounce some lower tier battleships that you that have low caliber guns, like the likes of Scharnhorst and Leon and, well, maybe Odin actually, but basically anything 380 millimeters or larger is going to overmatch straight through your nose. Your stern has the exact same issue. There is no icebreaker or anything. So trying to push in the champagne with this health pool and this nose means that you're going to be losing a lot of health very, very quickly. It also means that other battleships one versus one you extremely easily. The deck armor is 32 millimeters, as is the upper belt armor. Behind it, you have a fairly thin armor of 240 millimeters. It is a French turtleback, but the turtleback is so thin and really not angled enough to actually be effective in any way. Behind that turtleback, you have a fairly high citadel that extends all the way from, the, from in front of the front turret to behind the back turret. The citadel is basically the entire ship length from turret to turret. And it's high, and more importantly, that broadside citadel armor is 240 millimeters which is about behind that you have another plate of about 30 to 50 depending on where you look which means that on average the champagne has about 100 millimeter less armor than almost all the other tier 8 battleships the exception would be perhaps uh, north carolina that only has 305 but obviously that citadel is significantly lower than champagne so Fairly high, squishy, and a turtleback that doesn't really work. This all means that in terms of survivability, oh god, you're squishy. Uh, battleship doesn't even be begin to describe it. I would argue you are more of a battle cruiser than an actual battleship. The armor can't take any beating, and trying to push in is very questionable at best. The damage con is standard, which means it has a long cooldown. More importantly, the heal is also standard. So even if you build for it, you get about a 72 second reload with jack of all trades, which means that, well, you're not going to be surviving any long engagements. And of course, the heal does scale based off max health. So you're not actually healing anything more than anyone else. You do have access to an 8% speed boost, but it's not anything more than that. It's just 8% and you can enhance it so it lasts 270 seconds which will help you because in terms of speed the champagne is pretty fast it does 35.7 knots um, with just the speed flag and then when you add in uh, the speed boost you become a very fast battleship indeed and you need that speed because um, if any other battleships push, push you you're basically forced to disengage because you can't really brawl any other battleship, easily citadel, or much of all nose and stern. You struggle to do anything at close ranges whatsoever. The turning circle is 850, which I would guess is okay. It's not anything that special. Amagi has 850, North Carolina has 760. So... Oh, sorry, Amagi has 870, so you have 850. You, you, kind of, you kind of beat the Amagi. You're not as bad as the Soviets. Um, you're kind of exactly the same as the Germans when it comes to turning circle. Your rudder shift is pretty good at 15.5 without building for it. Personally, I build tankiness because, well, I feel this ship is squishy enough as it is. 
The AA defense values, the continuous is basically complete garbage. The continuous is just a complete joke. And you only throw up six flex shells. So in terms of AA, um, carriers will have a pretty easy time of absolutely battering you. The concealment is pretty good at 12.9. I wouldn't call it excellent by any means. I mean, Vladivostok can get 12.2. I think NC can get 12.2. Um, 12.9 is okay. Um, it's not going to win any awards. You beat the gas can, which does 13.2, but um, really it's nothing It's nothing really that stands out. Now, kind of the gimmick of this ship, the selling point is a bit of what you just saw there. And that is the main guns. That is what you give up all these other features for. That is why your AA is pretty questionable. That is why your health pool is trash and why your armor is trash. These guns is supposed to be the great selling point. Now, first of all, you only have six of them and they have a 28.6 second reload. That is actually a really weird value considering you can't even slot the, the reload mm, the reload booster. Oh, sorry, not the reload booster, but the, the tier nine, three million upgrade. 28.6 second reload. They have a very snappy turn time of 180 degrees in 25.7 seconds if you build for it. And a very impressive range of 25 kilometers. And the guns are 406 millimeters, which means you overmatch 27 millimeters, but 30 millimeter armor will auto bounce your shells. So obviously, well, you need to be finding a lot of broadsides. You're not going to be overmatching ships. You need to find broadsides in order to make use of these guns. If people angle, well, you will struggle to do too much unless you're up tearing against them. No, the selling point of these guns is the penetration values and the dispersion formula. It's supposed to have, I think, Graf Space dispersion formula, so not standard battleship uh, formula. And it also has a bit of a wonky system where, um, as far as I understood, you basically you, you, you get better dispersion the further away you fire, which is very Slava-esque. But unlike the Slava, which could at times at least push in if the situation arose, um, in the Champagne, if I'm in a situation like this, Georgia is pushing, I have support, but I'm still afraid to take the fight because I am just so incredibly squishy that I'm afraid to take this fight and I'd rather turn around and run away. So Champagne takes the squishiness to an absolute extreme and it only has six of these guns. The penetration values are insane though. The penetration values are in a completely, honestly, in a level of their own. In fact, uh, I put up a chart there that you can see that is the Richelieu, the Bismarck, the Amagi and the North Carolina. Basically the, st the most common tier 8 battleships in the game. And then that dark blue line at the top that I've kind of highlighted, that is the Richelieu. That is the, oh sorry, that is the Champagne. That is the penetration of the Champagne. So while the rest of them are struggling to do about 400 millimeters of pen at 20 kilometers, well the Champagne is well, closing in on 550. And if you look carefully, you can also see that it has the best shell travel time of them all. This can be rather tricky to use though. Um, most of the time you find yourself looking for not the optimal target, like the closest target, but you find yourself looking for the broadside target, regardless of range. In this case, Vladivostok, 20 kilometers away. A ship that has significantly better than uh, better armor than I do, but these guns, the shell travel time and this penetration means that you can actually catch them off guard in the strangest of ways. Let me put up another chart here. And this time we're comparing the Champagne to Yamato, Republic and Kremlin. And you can see that once again, Champagne actually beats the tier 10 battleships in pen. And if we could jump back into the game, um, well, here's a good example of what you can do with that penetration if you do get the broadside and if RNG does favor you. Citadels on battleships across on battleships all the way across the map. And you can pull this off against most of the battleships. In fact, you can even do it against German battleships to some consistency because you're shooting from so far away that oftentimes they're turning or you just get enough plunging in that you can actually citadel them. Uh, I've had it happen and I've seen it happen to someone else, so I would assume it is slightly more common in this, sh in this ship than any other. So that's basically, that's it. That's the selling point. Being able to citadel these ships across the map. 
And this comes at the cost of much of the map control that a battleship normally has. Because if an enemy battleship pushes you, you're forced to run away. Like, if a Bismarck charges me, I have to run. Or Bismarck, Terpitz, whatever. Like, there is nothing I can do. A Magi charges me, I have to run. Even an NC just slowly crawling up. Well, there is one other option that you can take. Uh, well, you're going to be forced to run regardless. You have to run. You can't roll in this thing. But it actually has a surprisingly great fire chance. The fire chance on these guns is 49%. Uh, and I, I've actually seen myself basically get fires, if RNG favors me somewhat, I've been able to get fires almost every single volley, which can be devastating, especially when up-tiered and forced to farm something like a Kurfur Stor, Yamator, Kremlin, or whatever that is pushing up against you. The problem I have is <laughs> the playstyle that the Champagne offers is absolutely mind-numbingly boring. It is the single most one-dimensional game style that you can possibly imagine. You are at best described a support battleship. You can you did you see that? That that was an example. That was an Amalfi, a tier 8 cruiser. That was a sap volley from the Amalfi. He did 13,000 health to me. 13,000 damage. That's a quarter of my health from one cruiser's HE volley. When you get focus fired, even the slightest bit in this ship, you completely explode. So you find yourself playing extremely passive. In fact, the, almost the more I played this game, the more passive I played. This is a fortunate game that there's not a carrier hunting you, because once carriers realize, hey, the champagne doesn't really have much armor, <laughs> and you can do a lot of damage to it, uh, they're absolutely going to start focusing it. Um, but even then, the, this ship is so easy to take down. The ship is so easy to absolutely annihilate. So you find yourself playing safer and safer and safer. And the more I played it, the safer I played it. Uh, I would try occasionally to use the speed to perhaps push down a flank to create a bit of a crossfire and so forth. But the second any other battleship shows up, if they're not dumb enough to basically provide you with a free broadside to shoot all match, you're gonna struggle to do anything to them. And they can absolutely go nose in and just blap you through your nose or through your stern and if you try to turn out straight through your broadside. I actually kind of hate the champagne because of the play style it encourages. It encourages max range in the back sniping battleship play style. And if you play this ship and you're sniping it from spawn, you're actually kind of doing it right. Because it's so terrible at everything else. And in fact, if we look at this Musashi, for example, who's peeking around this corner, I see him trying to crawl up on the minimap, so I'm gonna, you know what, I'm gonna switch to HE, and I'm gonna farm him. Maybe um, get a good example for a video of just how good the fire chance is. We take a shot at the Vladivostok, let's see if we can finish him. He's giving us broadside again at 18 kilometers, our pen is more than enough. And yep, that's a citadel. He's probably gonna get taken out. Note that I'm being very careful of not giving broadside to them because even at that range, they can absolutely citadel me. I turn around and the Musashi is pushing up as expected. And I'm thinking, okay, well, we're 13 kilometers away. This is already closer than you wanna be in a champagne. Going for that front citadel. Can we maybe get it? Nope, he's turning in, so obviously no overmatch means bounces. But I load HE, because as mentioned, the ship is a great fire starter, and the game is by no means won yet. It's about a 4 versus 6, and that Musashi, well, just made it a 5 versus 4. We switch to HE, and this is where one of the main issues of the champagne comes out. He's got no damage gone, he's sitting there quite vulnerable, and the closer you get, the worse the dispersion gets. <laughs> it is such a frustrating experience to be forced to continually keep this distance, be forced to continually just run away and play kind of like a coward all the time. Even when there are situations where you'd actually absolutely want to push in to finish off low HP targets, the, f the closer you are, the worse you are at finishing them off, which just seems so horrendously backwards. They finally get a good volley in, well, we get a good, we land three shells, and the great fire chance kicks in, and we actually get a fire on him. 
I'm slowing down, trying to get another shot. I do have to maintain my distance because, as mentioned, he can easily do an absolute ton of damage to me if he hits me. Next volley is out. We're down to a 4 versus 3. And the dispersion is all over the place. I think in order for this ship to be anywhere near enjoyable, the consistency would have to be better. Or... I don't, I don't even know how to make that. I think the full, whole concept of the ship is just flawed. The whole design is just bad. It is encouraging backline sniping at all costs. It, it doesn't, it's not just that when you push in, your squishy ship is at risk. For example, let's take a Henry. The Henry is uh, fast and fairly agile. Um, they missed with the acceleration, I know, but still, you can see that max range and spam HE. But if you charge in, if you push in into Henry, you can become an absolute brawling monster with the reload booster and the great AP pen and the torpedoes. Like, the game punishes you for being easier to hit and squishier when you get close, but the guns still reward you. That's kind of like the way the Thunder works as well, like the Thunder is really really good at range, but if you push in and you manage to survive uh, getting into positions in close range, those Thunder guns will absolutely annihilate everything that is close to you. The problem with this Champagne Dispersion Curve is that pushing in does not reward you in any way. It punishes you, armor-wise and health-wise, like it does all other ships, but it does it extra harshly, but there is none of that gun reward. There is none of that benefit of getting really close up and making sure that they can't dodge your volleys. Overall, as an experience, I found Champagne to be terrible. It's... Uh, th like, th this is one of the few ships where the people watching the stream, people watching me play the ship were like, Flamo, can you please play something else? Watching you play this ship is so incredibly boring. This Amalfi runs away and honestly I don't think there's too much else to see in this game. This match is just straight up over. We do do a th what? Not even that much damage actually. Uh, uh, to be fair, I've gotten a lot of consistency out of the ship. I haven't really gotten any monster games but I have gotten a lot of consistency. So I can't with a straight face say that this is a bad ship. In terms of performance, in terms of win rate and damage, uh, I've been performing perfectly okay with this ship. Uh, I think with something like 110k average damage and about 70 plus win rate, I played 21 battles in it, so the sample size of course means that take any values with a large pinch of salt. So I can't say that it is a bad ship, I just think it's a bad design. And it is so hard to enjoy this when there are so many other ships that are more enjoy I mean, why buy the Champagne when you can buy the Massachusetts and you can have firepower, secondaries, uh, super fast heal, torpedo belt, you can brawl and you can blap, like... There's so many ships that are just so much more fun to play than this thing is. Team score wise, eh, not really that impressive either. The Malf, uh, our Friesland and Musashi survived till the end. Detailed report was, well, the potential damage is pitiful, 500,000. We spent most of the time making sure we can't get shot at. We actually have 50k spotting, and not sure really how that happened, considering how far back we were playing the entire time. And as usual, pretty much all our damage came from AP, even though we did farm fire a fair bit of HE. And the HE can be rewarding thanks to the fire chance. The damage we took though, well, so every basically every shell we took, um, every shell you take in this thing tends to deal a ton of damage, especially when you're up tiered. Oh god, when you're up tiered, having to fight higher tier battleships in this thing is such an absolute nightmare. You play even more passive, and I just don't see it being enjoyable at all. Champagne is not a bad ship. Don't get me wrong, you can absolutely have some success, you can absolutely great get some really good games in it, but I think as a design, Champagne is a disaster. It is a battleship that actively encourages backline sniping and heavily discourages and punishes any sort of aggression and any attempt to push in at all. <laughs> it doesn't even have any AA either, so trying to play a flank in a carrier game is completely out of the question because once carriers realize that well they can just drop this thing as much as they want well that's obviously what they're going to be doing as well 
<sighs> anyway, let me show you guys my recommended build for this ship. Alright, let me first actually show you guys the armor that I spoke of. 25 millimeters nose, and as mentioned, a turtle back that can be easily punched through, and very thin armor. And this is actually the size of the Citadel, so obviously you should be treating this thing more really as a cruiser, because unlike the normal battleship that can get away with showing the broadside, this thing absolutely can not. Module-wise, turret survival, um, improved speed boost, if you don't have it, I would say tankiness, Bitter Dispersion, that's basically what you give up everything for, your guns, so might as well buff them as much as you can. Additional Tankiness, you can run Rudder Shift, and Concealment. Captain build-wise, if you have Honor, he's absolutely recommended because of improved AR, and that improved uh, Territories does make the ship more enjoyable to play. Priority Target, AR, Superintendent, I would say Fire Prevention, Concealment, Expert, Expert Loader, as mentioned, HE is 49% fire chance. Expert Marksman, and finally, Jack of all trades. Overall, let me actually check that so I'm not talking complete nonsense regarding this thing. I think we did, I think we've been performing pretty okay in this ship. We've been playing, I've been only been playing it on this account, so all my games are on this account. Let's see, Amalfi, Ochakov, am I being blind? There it is, Champagne. I. <laughs> I can't with a straight face say that I've been like the ship is a poor ship. In terms of performance, you can absolutely shine. I just think the design is a huge issue. And um, I, it's not even strong enough for me to actually recommend it. Like, I, I recommended Smolensk not because I think it's a good design, I think it's a horrendous design, but I recommended it because it's so stupidly powerful. Um, the Champagne I just have a hard time recommending because I don't think it's particularly fun, and I think the design is terrible, so honestly there is really no reason for me to recommend this ship. Unless you kind of, you're practicing on playing with like a gamepad, and you want to sit in the very far back and just snipe people with an Xbox controller, then um, go and buy the Champagne. Anyway, that was all for me. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will talk to you guys later.